still going to be going up an assassin, so she'll have to be careful. Single target lockdown would be good. I'd want to see them consider picking up their roamer now. If they want to control the tempo, they could go Kali. lead. Cho might be available for them. I, I don't mind giving Cho into the focus, playing Cho into the focus, honestly, but they're going to go with the uh, Gata Kacha. Uh, I think that might actually be the Roma duo already, and then they go with the Moscow. Oh, very early Moscow pick. Yeah. I wonder what the intention is. Is it just comfort coming in? Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of uh, high tier gold laners banned, and that's them forcing. Uh, I, I was gonna say to make Uzbekistan think about picking up their gold laner now. They're playing the clit into the Gata Kacha. That's that's a, that's a tough one for a clint, uh, especially if Saudi Arabia picks up another EXP laner here that uh, can easily access the back line. Tough. It's looking tough right now for Uzbekistan. I'm going to tell you now here, Anwar. The, the last time they played against Guatemala, their draft was Fovius, Suyo, Luo Yi, Clint, and Angela. Are they just going to run it back? Exactly. Is that the idea? Maybe. Uh, they might have room for it. Angela and the Suyo, Angela and the... Uh, they're going to pick up the Lo Yi, sure. But I think Saudi Arabia might read into that and just take it out. They go Lo Yi, I... You know, now that you've mentioned that lineup, I, I, I actually would go low ye, but maybe change up the Angela. Because right now with what I'm seeing, the Angela might just uh, experience a little bit too much pressure. I agree. So now that the Alpha has been banned, KSA, they're going to have to think about what they want to put in the jungle. Technically, oh no, actually the Nolan is also banned out. Yeah. What's the option here? Do they go uh, a different assassin? Uh, I mean, there's only one. Uh, for Rafa, it's if she has the Fanny. Fanny that you've been desperately searching for all throughout IESF women's especially. So if she has a uh, Fanny in a pool, go ahead and pick it up. But if Uzbekistan really wants to walk away with one of the best matchups possible, just don't just ban out the Fanny straight up. L make Rafa stick with just either the Hayabusa or the Ling. If you don't have enough info of whether or not Fanny is available for Rafa, play it safe, take out the Haya. Ling Angela. Yeah, and that would mean <laughs> Ling Angela would be available for them too, you're right. It was, I'm, I'm curious to see the next band from Uzbekistan. Alpha band out. And the Edith. Okay, so both the Fanny and the Ling has actually been left open. Hmm. Edith. Interesting. I feel like that's a signal that they're going for something a little bit more squishier in the center of the map. They might actually just default into going into Angela Loi yet again. Unless, unless KSA, they ban that out first, right? Just ban, just ban one of them. Let's see, gonna sell the chip. The chip was overlooked. So, what's it gonna be? Mm, I really want to see them pick up something sturdier yeah, as a front line. Because if KSA brings up another draft pick that can has backline access, so I think, yeah, they're just going for the same lineup they played against Guatemala. Yeah, Angela gets picked up here, so the last one should be... The Loi. The Loi, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if we're gonna base it off of what they played earlier. And what I'm afraid of is that they don't, other than the fact that, of course, they don't have a proper front line, uh, they only have the Fobius at the moment, they also don't have tools to work with. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. If they could, if they have it in them, put that Angela in the mid and just pick up another Roamer that uh, can help her clear minion waves fast. Have a lot of control. Ah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, probably a uh, Tigreal with a Concussive Blast. To help with the clear too. Yeah, they need that clear CC. Oh, oh, there you go! <laughs> well, you do get it. <laughs> yes! So she does, have the, she does have the fatty in her hero pool. Okay. Yeah, uh, that, that's not good news for Uzbekistan. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just going to say that now. There's not a lot of stops. There's no stoppers for the fans. Go Cho, go Cho. Yeah, if you can, go Cho. If not, Cho, just something to potentially stop that fanny. High invade, maybe. At this point, I would, even though it would be incredibly risky, it might be irresponsible to pick up a jawhead, but just like something to pressure the jungle. Come on, you all. You got this. Flex it into the mid lane. Grok, anyone really who could just get vision on this Fanny and invade, please. They don't have any lockdown for this Fanny at all. <laughs> if right? you get lockdown control, whoa! Okay. No 
Oh, Angela mid Rora. Uh, Rafa might have a field day. I'm just gonna leave it at that. The turn, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I mean, uh, uh, technically, their their initial draft was the Luo Yi, right? And technically, yeah. the Aurora has her passive. She's so she's not as easy to take down. Mm -hmm. I mean, by all accounts, Saudi Arabia won this draft. I if agree. If Uzbekistan pulls, pulls this off. Mongolia better watch out. I'm, I'm gonna have two <laughs> queens on my list. <laughs> because, come on. That, uh, again, the traditional thinking is if you're Suyo, you'd rather go up against an Alpha. You would not want to go up against a Fanny. You want to make sure you have something to stop the Fanny, the last pick of Saudi Arabia. Right now, they do not. So, looks tough for his next time. And I'm excited to see the Fanny in action. And I'm wondering whether or not the casters are as well. Finally get a Fanny, guys. Mirko, Naisu, what do you think about this? I don't know, man. Personally, for me, I'm a bit more 50-50 on the Fanny pick, right? Because obviously, there's no stoppers. Oof. It's great. You're very, very open. And if you do well on the Fanny, it's going to be an easy game. But we've kind of seen how hard it is to pull off the Fanny on stage. Yeah. It's just, it's already really difficult to execute the Fanny in ranked games and in your scrims. But on stage, is a completely different beast. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to jump into the land of Don to see if Saudi Arabia, Rafa, can utilize the Fanny to dismantle Uzbekistan in the way that they can play here with their very simple composition, I assume. I love the way that the panel put it, you know, for the most part, we had that little information on what Uzbekistan did with this lineup, nearly the same, right? Um, but this time around, of course, with the Aurora there, I also am wondering if they're able to stop Rafa here. Rafa yep. had a pretty difficult time on the high boost of the last game that we just streamed here. But now the tools are in their favor. You know, even this, looking at Livin, having this Jushin pick really helps build things out for them. And then, of course, you have Pink still in that Gatakacha. So they should have an upper hand. And I think it really, Ooh. you got to see how they kind of pick things apart because you do it's great you have an angela right you always got that you've got some freeze potential the frigid glacier can really help you out but ultimately like eterna said you are lacking a front line your front line is a phobius with a heart guard like that's the majority of it look at that taunt just a poke that's what we expect technically in this build lane Ooh, uh. oh they're still gonna go i don't think you can get Whoa. this kill on pink pink's quite low unless kana is able to pull something off so sever Okay. Almost. Almost. She also looked like, yeah, again, it will force out the flicker. I'm not sure if this is going to result when we do get back into this game. Yeah. If she's able to pick up a kill here. Because that's, that's two very low health bars there, Mirko. One good skill one. Yeah. <laughs> or even just a freeze there would would do uh, wonders for Uzbekistan. And this is what I'm saying, right? Uh, on top of the fact that the Fanny, we haven't really seen the Fanny just yet. She's going to still have to clear out her own jungle. But it's just really hard to execute, man. It is really, really hard. The Gata Kacha and the Jusin, this combo is really good. But I would say Aurora is easier to execute compared to the Jusin, right? You need to be very, very aware of your spacing, of yep. how you can get the Lantern Flare and the Crimson Beacon as well usage. Meanwhile, for Uzbekistan, they're playing with the simplicity of the draft. The Clint, very simple in lane and a good lane bully up against the Moskov. All she needs to do is buy uh, a bit more physical defense in the early game, maybe a steel leg play start with the warrior boots, and then it's over. Uh, it's going to be very, very tough for Rafa to get kills. On top of that, there's going to be an Angela that hits level 4. Fanny, global pressure. Heart guard comes in. You don't have that global Boom. pressure, no, no kill pressure anymore. And for the Fovias, it's just really good setup for whatever CC that's to come later. Because yeah. they have a lot of layers of CC here for Uzbekistan too. Whatever Hanana need, like how they approach these fights, I mean, even this, if you're looking at you know, this little skirmish happening here this yep. early on, you know, that's without the factor of having Hanada on the Fovius and obviously the Heart Guard too. Mm -hmm. So those all come into play. One thing I did notice as well before we, you know, had this little zoom out effect uh, on the stage is I believe the Revitalize hasn't been popped uh, from pink. So if we jump out of the game and they were able to get that off, you know, then that might keep them alive because the biggest worry that I have here is if this results into an early kill, or let's say even a double kill, um, going in the hands of uh, Saudi or, or Uzbekistan, this gives them that snowball potential. And like we said, you know, this whole time when you pick up a fanny early, you want to be able to snowball yourself, just like we were expecting with the Hayabusa in the previous match. But you know, if you get stalled or you stopped early, it's going to be really difficult to get the momentum going against the fact that you have that sustainability with a heart guard and even, you know, just trying to find the right moments. Because as you said, once those defensive items come into play, it's going to be pretty difficult to get an execute off on a fanny. But Very. again, it's so early in the game. 
we're only what a minute a minute and 18 in the game so far and a lot yeah. can change over the course of that and i think it's just obviously also kind of like the recency bias of how good fanny is last time we saw a fanny we saw it in the hands of skies, bro. And <laughs> again, for Fanny, a lot of times when we see in a pro play, it's always just the best of the best Fannies. It's pull a certain it off. jungler. It archetype. is a certain jungler. Yeah, not, <laughs> not a lot of them actually. Even the pro play, like, it, in pro play, not everybody goes Fanny. It's it's very difficult to execute, and if, if you miss just one cable, you lose out so much energy. So there's so much room for you to make mistakes, and especially up against a CC comp like this, you miss one cable, you can be frozen. Yeah. You can be jumped on by Phobius. Would you say that Fanny's the still, let's say, a, a crowd, even a crowd favorite? Like, is it still the hero oh yeah, that for sure. just gets there? Oh, 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 they jump it back to the Ooh. game. There's the revitalize I was talking about. The flicker will come through. Living, still living again. We saw her do this even yesterday, so good thing. It's in the name. It's in the name. Good thing for Sonny Raven, no one went down. Great usage of the Revitalize. Let's see this though, Rafa. Rafa could be in trouble. Rafa able to get a kill, actually. Able to get that first blood. So now we've seen the Fanny. There you go. There it is, mid lane. It's yeah, I think scary. it's still crowd favorite, yeah? Definitely Probably the is. most. Yeah, Ling, Ling, Fanny, whenever you see that, those two picks, you definitely get excited, right, for, for all the viewers. It is very, very entertaining, and now it gets really dangerous for Uzbekistan. The fact that Fanny got one kill after clearing the entire camp, uh, Uzbekistan will definitely have to go for the turtle control. No revitalize, so that's a good piece of information that they will utilize to take control of this. They just have to be very careful about the cables from Rafa. She is on a purple ball. Yeah, she's going to get her purple. They might be able to just grab this unless it can be stalled out a little bit. Livin doesn't have the level 4 either, so it looks like objective secured. Kana will get that one with the Retribution, so Uzbekistan will get an objective. I'm not sure if they can get anything further. Rafa looks like she's just going to be focusing on the jungle for now. And that might be part of the plan, you know, because they know information-wise, there's a lot of ultimates missing. I mean, Pink, Livin as well didn't have it for that fight. And we know this very well. We, you can give up even the first turtle and still obviously come in for the second one yep. with those ultimates, with those battle spells. Like you mentioned earlier, Mirko, you know, that revitalize even wasn't available for that fight. Mm -hmm. And just take a look at this lane, right? The Clint versus the Moskov matchup, Uzbekistan definitely getting the advantage there. This is already a very, very good winning lane, by the way. Like, the Clint absolutely demolishes the Moskov. You're just a laner at this point. You're just a farmer, not a laner. Uh, all you need to do is just look for farm, maybe look for ganks as well, and that's what you're doing. Saudi Arabia with a rotation. Instant Whoa, flicker. Instant flicker. Wow. I, she just saw living and just like, nope. Yeah. I'm not dealing with this. She knows of the threat of the Crimson Beacon. There's also another flicker to follow through, and then a AOG. So if you get caught first, yeah. it'll be very dicey to flicker out. So might as well, if you're going to burn the flicker, burn it instantly. Do it uh, preemptively, you know, at this point. And, well, now you also have the hard card in consideration from Yule. So, even if she gets caught a little bit, at least you can rely on that. Khan is still doing a pretty good job at rotating oh. around. Whoa, Spear just being lobbed out there. Thought there'd be a fight. There There's go. a jump, though. Avatar of the Guardian on space Ooh. loves us. Kana will be there to help out. Not sure. They're going to be dragged a little bit from this living. Really trying to proc that, but won't be able to. So, nothing... Just yet up top, Kana gonna jump back Ooh. in. Slowly is there. Won't utilize that Fridge Glacier, so no one going down. Great disengage there from Uzbekistan. It really looked like with the AOG, it was gonna be over for Space Loves Us, who had already committed the flicker very early in the previous gank attempt. But again, because Kana was there, she was just able to stun Pink before she got the taunt down. It yeah. became a really good fight because they're the ones who lost out on the resources. No AOG, no Revitalize. Uzbekistan have control. There it's slow. Rafa. Rafa also dealing with it. She's just trying to get her orange buff. She's forced off of it, and this mm -hmm. could actually give that window of opportunity now for this turtle. Hinata doing the same thing as we expected with the Phobius dragged away over, but hey, she still has the Infernal Pursuit, so she's gonna deal with it. Whoa. Tanking multiple, she actually flickers forward. Oh, that's a hard card too, under the turret. She will go down, but the objective is secured. Second turn of the game for Uzbekistan. Okay, two turtles versus two kills, and the two kills are on Rafa. So technically, Rafa hasn't really been shut down just yet, but Uzbekistan are slowly but surely getting to a power spike, where again, in the team fights where they're gonna have to clump up, it'll be very, very dicey for Saudi Arabia with the CC2. They're gonna have to find these fights a bit more spread out. They can't go for a pure 5v5 clumped up composition against Uzbekistan's front to back. They have a lot of sustain, so many displacements, and crazy CC with the Aurora. So we'll see if Saudi Arabia can actually look for picks because as of right now, 
It's very risky, even diving into the Clint. Angela, Aurora, there's so much CC to uh, stop you. And that's why Rafa hasn't really been able to find kills the, tr the traditional way. The traditional, from yeah. the first Angela kill, right? Because Ula kind of overextended in the mid lane a bit. After that, it was just kind of like looking for scraps. He not so overextending a bit. It's always through little mistakes from Uzbekistan, but it's yeah. not the normal fan that we're seeing, right? Like side lane control, kill, side, side lane. lane kill. Here she is. There's a kill, you know. But at this point, I would say Rafa's doing a relatively good job. At least, you know, yep. she's managed to get those kills in the unusual way. But it keeps her in the game because that's what has to happen. Her and Kana basically need to be matched up. It's just a little bit easier for Kana to go ahead, rotate where she needs to be, and then rely on the team to help set things up. Whereas, of course, Rafa, it's a little bit different that time. So... This is where, again, okay, it looks like she's gonna go up top. Has the damage. Space loves us, though. Won't be able to escape. The cables come through. Rafa picks up the third kill, and that's what I was saying. You know, at some point, she is gonna have that damage profile that's threat enough to just go and appear in a lane, get a kill, and then get out. Definitely. And, uh, I mean, if I personally am just gonna look at the items, Rafa, oh, going back to the mid lane. Now we're finally seeing the traditional Fanny. Looking for kills in the side lane, and for Space Loves Us, I just don't see the respect here at all from Space Loves Us. It's a tough boot, too. So, more respect towards the CC. Lunar picking up the turret down below. There's no defense whatsoever for Space Loves Us, and this might literally be the mistake that gives uh, Saudi Arabia a massive oh. advantage. Again, they're gonna force the fight. Looking for the objective here. Demonic force they're using, utilizing, and they get the turtle. Rafa is able to get it. Now the fight's gonna break out. Hard guard already used. Frigid Glacier won't land on members they're looking for. She's in trouble as Lyric's gonna fall, and now with everything else thrown oh. out the window, and auto falls. Spear Destruction does get used and followed up. Lunar, Lunar trying to fire her off with it. Livin's still there too, and she's gonna back off. A trade across the board, really. Very tough fight there for both these teams. But like I mentioned, even though they kind of failed at getting the turtle here, Uzbekistan, you saw exactly how strong their composition is in a pure 5v5 with the front to back actually works. It's so hard for Rafa to dive deep. There's so much damage coming her way. And maybe that's the reason Space Loves Us hasn't gone for defense. She just wants to play with the team and go full glass cannon. You walk up, one of us dies. At that point too, you know, she's got to get up on this gold. She's... What, a thousand gold or a little bit more behind, you know, Lunar. And we saw Lunar even show up for that fight. It would have been better if she was able to get there a little bit sooner. But I think at the same time, you were also able to avoid some of that initial setup. She's going to go ahead and throw the spear once again. Conceal going to be used. Pink charging the Unbreakable up. Looking for slowly. She's still got the passive. Ooh. We'll get the flicker out. There's the Avatar of the Guardian. They jump in. They want slowly here. Passive uh -oh. still going to pop off. Looking for the cleanup kill. Space loves us, though. Has to flicker defensively, too. And now Lunar trying to run away from Hinata. Has the rest of the team still with their pink. Taking a couple shots. Space loves us. Doesn't have the damage she's looking for just yet. But still, with the Infernal Pursuit, Hanada giving the call under the turret. They might just go ahead and secure the turret here. Oh, Cable. Wow. Jumping in, trying to keep the turret alive. Trying to pop out the damage on Hanada. Hanada, one hit away. Wait. Does she stay alive through it? Whoa, she almost got Rafa in the exchange. But finally, Hanada goes down. Man, what a drawn out team fight. Uzbekistan. I would say even though they kind of lost a team by Lyrex, wants to go in, curtain call. Oh. Lunar goes in with the Spear of Destruction, able to find two into the Spear of Misery, and now you lay in trouble. Here's Pink, comes in, double kill for Lunar. Now it's a big goal lead, 2,000 almost for Saudi Arabia. For Uzbekistan again, the overextending is really, really killing them. Winning out in a few of these skirmishes, getting the prior trades, but in the end, falling flat as they kept on trying to get more. Rafa, 4, 0, and 2. This is a very, very scary Fanny at the moment in the ninth minute of the game. The first few fights, maybe they were able to out-sustain, outplay Rafa, but now it's getting very, very difficult. Oh, oh, Hanada jumped in, was trying to go in for the wow. steal now. Has to rely on the team. Hard guard going to be used as well, but it's just too much damage coming through as Hanada falls a double for Rafa. She's looking for more possibly. Kind of on the run. Frigid Glacier able to stop them in their tracks. Pink running it through. Slowly finally goes down. And now Rafa with the rest of the team. Full health. Will be looking for space. Loves us. Rafa takes a couple shots. Kind of there too. Still Lord in the mid lane. They're going to be working for it. Kind of trying to hold it down with space. Loves us. But they want the tier two taken down. They still have the holy shields. They should be able to clear this out. 
but they lost just so much in that fight. Yeah, they lost so, so much, man. A few of those kills again. Rafa is the one who picks it up. So snowballing is going to be even deadlier at this point of the game. And Uzbekistan, I like the fact that Saudi Arabia respected that, right? They saw that the Clint and also Suya was still available. Space Loves us and Kana were still alive. And they know how much damage they can do in that kind of defense with the range that they have. It's the GDS second item building towards, I believe, Melvic Roar should be, Melvic but Roar, yeah. AOG! AOG not gonna find a connection from Pink, but she goes in with the Unbreakable Baton. Right, fine, slowly, even with the Frigid Glacier, and Hanada's gone too. Heartguard on Space loves us, but she doesn't want to go into that fight. Four bodies there, waiting for Kana. Space loves us, backs off, clears the wave, and another Holy Shield being popped here on the top side. There's no damage that we can deal towards Saudi Arabia at this point of the game. I think Pink and Lyrics are just too beefy of front lines. And really, when we take a look at CC, that's not supposed to be the case. <laughs> CC is a squishy fighter in the XP. She's not the type to actually be able to soak in all that damage, at least without Vengeance, right? You add in Vengeance, it's it's cool. You can soak in damage. The fact that she doesn't need Vengeance, hasn't needed Vengeance yeah. in the last few fights, is just oh so, so tough for Uzbekistan now. What do they have to wait for at this point, right? I'm looking at the item power spikes. It's actually a Berserker's Fury uh, that Space Loves Us is on the way to. And I don't think that's going to be the answer uh, for all the defenses that Saudi Arabia have. I think they need a bit more penetration. Currently, none of them have it. It's a Hunter Strike, one Hunter yep. Strike for Kana. That's the only penetration tool that they have. Even for the Magic side, go and won, uh, nothing else. There's no Divine Glaive build just yet. They're obviously very far behind. and. I guess we have a few more minutes to just talk about the state of the game right now because for Saudi Arabia, 6,000 goal lead with this kind of composition that should have been shut down at the start of the game. It's not really looking good for Uzbekistan and their hopes to come back in this game. Yeah, I think like you mentioned, you know, the biggest glaring factor here is the fact that Uzbekistan isn't able to really go toe-to-toe -to -toe in these fights. You know, they're not able to actually provide the damage. Because like, even if they, let's say they avoid the Avatar of the Guardian, that we've seen actually happen multiple times from Pink, they still have to deal with a taunt. And usually, a taunt alone from the Unbreakable will be enough to force out the Heart Guard or some form of a response, right? And then part of that, too, is even if you get a lockdown with your Frigid Glacier Ultimate with this Aurora from Slowly, you don't have enough follow-up damage. It did, like, in the early game, you at least, you know, Suyo's damage from Kana was pretty good. But Space Loves Us, like you mentioned, is just not there yet. Maybe if they're able to buy a little bit more time, you know, another, you know, few minutes, then they're in a better fighting position. But it's getting really tough here. Blade of Destruction is going to be picked up by Kana. But ultimately, I mean, Renmar called it, man. You know, when that, that Aurora was picked up last and they knew they were up against a Fanny, if you're not able to catch that Fanny at all, she's just got kind of a free lane to just kind of zip in, zip out, and do enough damage where then you have enough follow-up from Lunar. It's just too much follow-up at this point of the game. They have so much side lane pressure as well. This is why the Moskov, at the end of the day, when it comes to late game, mid to late, you're just so, so scary, right? Because on top of having a Fanny, by the way. So they I have two say, members, yeah. two heroes that can constantly just slow push bottom lane, and that's exactly what they're doing. Rafa slow pushing bottom lane on the Fanny, rotating to the Lord. And Kana is just not able to walk up. That's a free Lord over to Saudi Arabia. Great macro game here. Slow pushing, and this time, I don't know, Uzbekistan. Let's talk about their clear. If it's just hidden, uh, Space Loves Us, I don't think they're going to be able to clear out the lore, right? I think yeah. at least they're going to lose a base turret. That's minimum. One base turret. Maximum, this could be possibly an end angle. Knowing that Saudi Arabia have so many sieging power, uh, mm -hmm. so much sieging power, so much zoning power as well, inside of the base. All they need to care about right now is... Oh, that's a Look at that defensive item. Wow! Respect over. Oh, you can see Lunar's damage too, man. Just piercing through the minions onto Hinata. That's actually enough though, because if you think about it, right, you get that passive, that technically that debuff towards gun. the physical damage of Uzbekistan. Yep, Malefic Gun. Also the wings picked up here by Livin. They are ready to end this game, I feel like, with these power spikes. Mid turret is gonna already be taken care of. You can see the heart guard hovered over space loves us. You're gonna have to clear out the Lord. It's already gonna be used. Space is already a half health. They jump on in. They're still working for Avatar. The Guardian won't connect, so Pink misses that one. Lord finally goes down. There's the Spear Destruction. Oh, Multiple members able to get targeted down. And the base is just going to be worked on as Saudi Arabia will just decisively take the game. They don't care about the team fight. They care about the point. 
as they end the game with that decisive team fight. On the dot, 14 minutes of game time, Saudi Arabia decides to just take it with the first enhanced door to the game. Clean game from them, the three-way push as well, really, really well played. Whether or not bot in top before you clear out the mid lane, just to stagger that Lord wave, that Lord uh, from getting into the base first. And yeah, we saw just how much that engage, how much the siege power they have. We were talking about it already, right? We yep. were mentioning how much siege power they have, how much zoning tools they have. And they just played it really, really well played. And for Uzbekistan, he's got to go back to the drawing board, man. This marks their second loss, I believe, that is streamed at least here. Yep. If you guys want to check out the official group standings and the current live updates, go ahead and check out ISF.gg because this is shaping up to be a very, very close group. And Saudi Arabia claiming their second win. Second win here, and you know, it's, I would say when